Hey, this is Safi Vavi from Meklerf.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video we're going to learn how to play Scott Joplin's The Entertainer on guitar. Now, this is a complete fingerstyle arrangement. I have no idea who made this arrangement. I, I've searched high and low for a complete arrangement containing all four parts. I found this one, I've learned it in order to teach you how to play it. So, um... Whoever made this arrangement, if you know who made this arrangement, write it down in the comments and credit will be given. Anyway, um, two things you need to know. This employs the Travis picking technique, meaning that you play the rhythm, the ragtime rhythm, with your thumb. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Ragtime is a one, two rhythm. Now, um, the second thing you need to know is that it's in drop D meaning that you lower your E string, your E bass, down to D. Okay? Um, all right, so let me play it for you and then we'll jump right into the lesson with tabs on the screen and everything and we'll break it down lick by lick and learn how to play this one. Enjoy, it goes like this. It's in drop D, so make sure you tune your guitar to drop D. And let's begin. It begins with this lick. Okay? And before we break it down, the next lick is just the same lick, an octave down. These are octaves. Okay? Octaves. So, it's 5 and 7 on the E string. 8 and 5 on the B string, 
seven on the B string and seven on the G string. Okay? Five, seven, eight, five, seven, seven. Then an octave down, so it's two and four on the G string, five and two on the D string, then four and five on the D string, then the A string. Four on the D string, five on the A string. Okay? Two, four, five, two, four, five. And then this one. Okay? This is zero to two on the A string. Five, two on the E string which is a D string now. And then four, two, one, zero on the D bass. Okay, the E string. So, um, zero, two, five, two, four, two, one, zero. And you pick a D chord. Now you can pick it like this, with your fingers, or you can strum it. Whichever sounds good to you. Now you can embellish this as well. Okay, hammering on. Um, sliding down. Okay, again. Okay, if you want, if you if it doesn't sound good to you, then just leave it like this. Um, sometimes I embellish, sometimes I don't. Um, it depends on what you want to play. Now. This is gonna be a long lesson. Um, first part of the song. Um, I wanted to play it first so you can hear how it goes. It, um, I'm gonna play it a bit slower than the demonstration. So you begin with two and three on the D string. And then you take a C chord shape up two frets. Um, so your bass note is on five. This is a D chord. This is a D add nine chord, but uh, you don't play the add nine. You play all three notes that you press. So um, the lick is just the D string and the B string three times. Okay, so got it? Two, three, lick. Okay, um, now the bass notes go like this. Okay, I'm gonna speak up with the bass notes. Bass, 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 bass. Okay? And you just play the low D and then the A bass on five, which is another D note. So it's two D bass notes. So it's low D, high D, low D, high D. Okay? So E, A. This is confusing. E, A, E, A. Okay? Together again. E, A, E, A. Okay, got it? Now at normal speed. Now this last note was wrong because now you need to play five on the 
E string, which is now a G note. So it's five, and then you pick the D string, and then four on the E string. So it's five on the E bass, D string, four on the E bass. Okay? Um, I think you got it. So the next line is this. So this is just sixths. I hate that word, sixths. Um, now you begin with the sixth which is within the D chord, um, three on the B string and four on the D string. This is a minor sixth. So you play this and then a major sixth on five, which is just five and five on the B string and the D string. So you play the first minor sixth and then the major sixth and then you just move it up to six, then to seven. Okay, so it's, uh, let's call it three. So it's three, five, six, seven. Okay, it's three and four, five and five, six and six, seven and seven. And when you're playing the stick at seven, you pick the A note, the A bass. Got it? Just three and four, five and five, and seven and seven without the sixth. So it's three, five, seven. Then the bass again. Then two and two. Then five and five. Then three and four. Okay? Two, five, three. So it's three, five, six, seven. Uh, three, five, seven. Two, five, three. Now along with the bass notes. A, A. And then you play open A string, then two on the A string, then four on the A string, but along with the four you play the two and the three on the D string. Okay, so it's uh, zero, two, four, and two together. Two on the D string. You play them together, you keep the uh, four on the A string ringing, and you pl play the three on the D string. Okay? So, this is actually a C sharp minor triad, minor third, sorry, um, C sharp minor third turning it into a C sharp major. Okay? So and then up to D. It's a sort of a chromatic movement, a very smart chromatic movement in back to the D. Um, and then you play this again. Okay, we play this, then you play this again. The lick, 5, D string, 4, then this. Okay? This is a hint of things to come because uh, the next parts have really complicated high parts. So um, you pick, you, you bar the 7th fret, just a second. I have a spotlight right on me, so it's getting really hot in here. So, okay, now you get this. You bar the seventh fret and you pick seven on the E string, ten on the B string, and then um, nine on the B string along with 7 on the A string. 
Okay? This is an E major third. So seven, ten, nine, along with the high E bass. Bass. It's not a bass note, but it's a high E bass. It's the bass note of that chord. So and then seven on the E string again. 10 on the E string, 14 on the E string, A bass, okay, and then pull off from 12 to 10 on the E string, and then 12 on the B string, and then another major sixth. Uh, on 12 and 12 on the E string and the G string. Okay? So, together. And then this little leg again. Got it? So, together. Um, okay, I didn't play the bass here. Um, you can skip the bass, it's, the, the lick sounds nice, but the bass gives it sort of an emphasis. Uh, listen to the difference. Okay, this is kind of a break. And this... This gives the break a bit more emphasis. So uh, sometimes I play the bass, sometimes I don't. I prefer to play the bass, but sometimes I don't know. My fingers just do whatever they like. Um, that didn't sound good. Anyway, you do this. Again. Then you do the first line again. And then you play A bass and D bass. And now, one of my favorite licks of all time, this one. The bass movement here is genius, it's, it's ingenious, it's, it's amazing, I love this movement. Um, it's a descending bass line, uh, which is still in ragtime. It's a bass, then a pedal note, then going down uh, a half step, then the pedal note again, then a half step, then the pedal note again, then the half step, then a pedal note again, then A. So it's an ingenious uh, arrangement for guitar, this one. On piano, it's a lot easier. It's just dun -dun 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 -dun. but on guitar, it's it's quite ingenious. You're going to like this. So, the lick is this. Okay? This is pretty easy. Um, it's just 10, 12, 14. Then again. Then 10, 12, 10. 14, 10, 12, 14. Then 10, 12, 10 again. Okay, uh, that's pretty simple. Now the bass notes go like this. D string. Yeah, this is gonna be confusing. I'm not sure I'm gonna explain this well. I'm gonna try my best. So, D, 10, and then 12 along with 12 on the A string. Okay, got it? D. And then 14 again. So, D string, 12 on the A string, and then 10 on the D string, on the D bass, on the E string. Told you it's confusing. 10 on the E string. Okay. Uh, I hope you're starting to hear the logic behind this. D string, A, 10, 
10 on the E string. So, and then this. So with, along with 12, you play the G string. And then you play 14 on the E string along with 9 on the E bass. Okay? So together with these two notes, it sounds like this. 10. G. Okay? Again. D. 12 on A. 10. G. 9. And then 10 and 12 again. G on the, the G string along with the 12. Okay? Um. Then 14 by itself, then 8 on the E string. Together again. We're going to take this one really slowly because it's very confusing at first. It's also confusing to explain, but it's really confusing to get down at first. So. Okay? This is where we're at. This is where we are. You can't say we're, when we're, where we're at. That's slang. Not that there's anything wrong with slang. It's just that I'm an educational person. So, um, I hate explaining this. Like, I love playing it. I hate explaining it. But this is probably one of the more difficult parts of this composition. So from here on out, it's going to be... A smoother sailing. I'm not. I'm not gonna gonna lie to you and say that it's gonna be easy. But this is probably the trickiest one to get down um, because the picking is really confusing. So um, again, okay, and then ten, twelve, ten with G on the twelve again. I think we're done. Yeah, we're done. Um, we, we've only got this left. Okay, so together, again, I'm gonna play it and read it out as I go along. D, A, 10, G, 9, G, Eight, G. Okay. One last time. D, A, ten, G, nine, G, eight. That's the best I can do. I really hope you got it. That's how it sounds. Then um, it's the same as here. Okay, it's even the same. Uh, it's even the same shapes only here. So it's 14 and 14 along with the A bass. Um, 14 and 14, of course, on E and uh, G. Okay, we're playing the high uh, 14, and it's sixth so it's a major sixth so 14 and 14 with a then 10 and 11 and 12 and 12 then 14 and 14 again so a 9 and 9 12 and 12 10 and 11 and then a and d just make sure you don't play them together, you don't play it like this. Okay? You don't want to sound as if you're tuning a guitar. You, you want to mute the A 
bass before you play the D bass. Okay, you mute it with your thumb. You pick it, you touch it with your thumb, and you pick the D string. Um, the irony, I just explained one of the more difficult licks and now I'm explaining a simple muting process. Um, I don't know, I find it amusing. So, um, together and now that you know what I'm playing this is gonna look a bit less scary Second part is really fun. It's a it's a lot of fun. It's this. major third on two on the E string along with three on the B string. Okay, two and three. This is inside the D chord. So, it's a major third and then it's a minor third chromatically going up from three and five to four and six. Then it's five and seven, but this is where the, uh, the lick actually gets going because you add the bass okay you add the a bass so it's two three four five five and seven along with the a bass okay you just add your pinky on seven making it seven and seven a fourth um, and you pick the d string along with seven and seven then you play 5 and 7 again, then the A bass again. Got it? Bass, bass, bass. A, D, A. 5, 7, 5. And then again. So you play it twice. difference of playing the D string along with 3 and 5 this time because you want to keep the basses going. A, D, A, D. Okay? And you finish on the A string. Then a D chord, you just play it from uh, top to bottom. So you play the E string, B string and G string. Now I like to embellish this, I like to play it like this. Okay, I like to um, 
to pick the entire chord and then the B string and the G string again. You don't have to do it. Um, you can you can also um, pick it like this if you want. Um, you don't have to do it. It sounds good like this. And then you put uh, either your third or your third finger or your pinky on the G bass, which is now at five on the E string, because you need this. Okay. Um, so you keep your uh, your G bass pressed and you play this. Zero, two, three on the B string. Open E string. Two and zero on the E string. You play the G bass again with two. So together. Got it? Bass. And then three on the B string, open E string again. So, got it? Um, and then this. So it's the D chord again. You pick strings D and G. And then you pick the E string. And then on the E string, three, five, seven. Okay? When you pick the E string the first time, of course, it's on two. It's on F sharp because you've got the D chord on. So D and G, two, three, five, seven. Okay? So the first line of the second part goes like this. If not, we'll come back to it. Okay, so um, after you play this, you play this again. Okay, and then you play this. So um, you just play five and seven. You can strum them. Okay, it's a phlegm. And then seven on the E string, eight on the E string, and then um, it's A7. This is a D7 shaped A7 on nine. It's nine, eight, and nine. And you play the A bass along with it. So, and you play the chord three times. So, and then you play uh, an E chord again, okay, but you just need these three fingers. You need seven on the E string, nine and nine on the B and G strings, and then five on the E string again. So it's... Now, I like to slide back into the five. Okay, it's just a small embellishment, a Tommy Emanuel um, style embellishment. You don't have to do it, of course, this is my preference. And then the A bass twice. And then you play the whole thing again. So let's play it, and then play it again, and then play the second ending. It's up to here. It doesn't look as scary as when you don't know what's being played, right? After, after you uh, you actually dissect a piece and know what's being played, it seems less scary. Um, 
check it out. I mean, pay attention to that. The first time you see me play something, um, most of you uh, comment, uh, you, you write the, the minute of, uh, of the video in which I'm playing, and you go, oh my god, and then uh, most of you leave a comment after watching the video, this is so easy, thanks for explaining it. That's because when you see somebody play and you don't know what they're playing, it looks a lot more difficult than it is, and when you know what's being played, it automatically decreases in, um, in complexity in your mind, because you, you know, you understand what's being played. That's why I keep repeating everything a thousand times, because then you understand what's being played and you can dissect it by just watching me play it again and again, and you actually practice it in your mind when you're watching it. Even thinking about what you're going to play is practice. It's called visualization. That's why I keep playing it over and over again in my videos. Okay, so uh, now enough talking, back to playing. Um, and talking. So... Okay, this is the second ending. Okay? It's the same G. You play 0, 2, 3 on the B string. Um, 0, 2, 0 on the E string. Again, uh, 2 along with the G bass and then 3 on the B string and then the open E string again but, but so far it's the same lick and then you play D but you play you play the D bass along with 3 on the B string and then you play G string, B string Okay, and now comes the ending of the second part, which repeats itself as a transition between the third and fourth part again. So um, just um, just know that this is the ending to the second part and to the third part. So now this leg two one two on the G string. You can play it several different ways. You can slide it, you can pick it, you can pull it off and hammer it on, or you can do what Chad Atkins does and do this. Um, zero, hammer on to two, slide back to one, slide back to two. Okay? You can also hammer it on, then pull it off, then hammer it on again. Okay? There are many ways you can play this lick. But the basic lick is 2-1-2. Two, two. Now, a G chord, um, F-shaped G chord. Um, one on, um, one, three, I was thinking about F. Um, three on the B string, four on the G string, five on the D string. And you play this. This is it. You play the you play the D string along with the B string, and then G string, B string. And then you take your pinky and you put it on six on the D string. And then you play G string, B string, G string again. Okay, so it's make sense now. that chromatic movement does the job so well. And then D again. It's just the D and G strings together, then B string, then E string. Then 5 on the E string, then D again. This time it's E string, B string, G string. Okay, so it's You can pick the D bass again after you play the five.
basses going, but you don't have to. Okay? And then this. This is E7, A, D. E7, you just play one, you, you press one on the G string, two on the D string, and you pick uh, the B, G, and D strings. Then you add the seventh note with your pinky on three on the B string. It's E to E7. You pick all three again, B, G, and D. And then A7, first it's A7-6. You pick the A bass, uh, an open G string, and two and two on the B string and the E string. So you pick E, B, and G along with the A bass, two and two on the E and B strings. This is uh, seven, six, chord or you can call it 713 or you can call it a jazz 13 chord you can call it a 13 chord you can call it a jazz six, sixth doesn't matter how you call it that's how it sounds and then you take the, uh, the finger off of the E string and you just play an open E string so the context is actually just a seventh chord the seventh chord is still playing. All these notes are still playing. And then D, you play the B string, <coughs> excuse me, the B string on three, of course. And then you play this. So it's D, G, A, and then G and B together. D, G, A, D5. This is D5 because we don't play the major note. Uh, the ending again. second part again. Way through. Now the third part. The third part is kind of a chord solo. Up till now it's been um, more like uh, chromatic movement with, uh, with arpeggiating chords. But now um, it's, uh, the third part is kind of a, a one big chord solo. Let me play it slowly so you can try and see how it goes um, and you'll get the feel of it and then we'll break it down now it's both easy and difficult at the same time because um, because it's easy because it's chords so you just memorize shapes but it's difficult because you have to put some really unorthodox chords on like that this first chord Okay, when I first learned this piece, it took me, I mean, I've learned the entire piece, but this little chord gave me so much trouble, I just couldn't get it down. Um, I, I've, pra I've had to practice it for a week before this felt comfortable for me. Um, so, 
I'm sure most of you won't have trouble with this, but each set of fingers has trouble with something in this piece because this is a very, very uh, complex composition. So let me play. So you begin by putting this on, this little chord on, um, you bar the 5th fret, the entire 5th fret, and then you put both 2nd and 3rd fingers on 6 and 7 on the E string, and the pinky on the B string at 8. Now this is what gave me the trouble, um, putting both 2nd and 3rd fingers on the same string. Uh, after all, you're not supposed to do that. Um, usually, as you're being taught when you just start learning guitar, um, if you put two fingers on the same string, then one of them is probably wrong and should be taken off because there's no reason to put two fingers on the same string. And here, there's a reason, because you do this, okay? You take the third finger off and back again, um, to make a major third into a minor third and back to a major third, uh, which is difficult in and of itself because you need to take that third finger off and back again, so you have to get used to that again. This is probably the chord that, they, that gave me the most trouble in all the 17 or 18 years I've been playing. Um, I hated this chord when I just learned it, but I'm sure that you'll get used to it a lot faster than I did. So, you play this, and, and um, again, you take the, let's recap, barring the 5th fret, 6th and 7th on the E string with your 2nd and 3rd fingers and pinky on the E string, uh, on the B string at 8. So um, you play this, uh, 7 and 8, then 6 and 8, then 7 and 8 again. And the bass notes are G, G and G. Um, these are the notes, but you pick um, the E string and the D string at five, so they're G notes, so, okay, okay, you pick the E bass, then the D bass, then the E bass, so, E, D, E, E, D, E, okay, so, and then, before you do this, you can pick an open E string instead of the last G note. It works as well. Listen to this. Okay? Sounds fine. You, so either play the last G note and just jump here, or just play an open E note and the, an open D note, actually, an open E string, um, and then jump. You have time enough to prepare this chord. So. That's what I usually do. And then this chord. It's just a uh, G chord, uh, which is um, 10 on the E string and 12 and 12 on the B and G strings. So, so it makes sense to play the G 
the G bass, but uh, if you're having trouble with the jump, or if you don't like the fact that there's no bass note playing when you play this, then just play the open, uh, the open E string. I like to have bass notes playing in the background, so I don't like it when a bass note cuts off, so I prefer the E string. If you want to get uh, Puritan about it, ju just play the G, the G chord, the G bass. And then you play, um, you play, it's a C chord, you play the D shape on 12, 13 and 12 along with the A bass, so it's C over E, so uh, C over A, and if you're playing C over A, then it makes sense to play G over E, G over D uh, beforehand. So you've got one complex chord and then another complex chord. So for those Puritans of you uh, who wanted to play the G bass because a D bass isn't the G bass, then you can play G over D, and then you play C over A, anyway. Okay? I hope you got the logic of that. Anyway, do whatever sounds good to you, you don't have to listen to my advice. Okay, this is the leg. And then, you pull off from 1 to 0 on the B string. And then you play a C chord, you play the A string and the B string, and then three on the B string, then open E string. So it's just this. Okay? Pull off, C, three on the B string, E string. Now this, of course, is C9, so you can say that you're playing a pull off and then C, C9. And then this. This, this was a, ma a major movement. This was a major chord, this was a major chord, this was a major chord. By the way, this is G. Because if you take D up to seven, it's G, so that's what you're playing. Okay, with a low bass. So, um, and then another major chord. So it's all major chords. And now it's a minor movement of the same taste. So uh, you play this, uh, you bar the second fret and you play. Uh, you put your second finger on three on the E string and the pinky on five on the B string. This is E minor. So now you take off the second finger and put it back on again. Okay, from three to two, so three, two, three. The bass movement is the same. Uh, e string, D string, E string again. So, bass, 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 bass. Or, open D again. So you have time to move here. Now this, which is E minor, uh, it's 7, 8, 9 on the E, B, and G strings. I just remember a really stupid joke with 7, 8, 9. So, and then you play A minor, which is 8 on the, um, the E string, 10 on the B string, G on the 9th string, which is D minor up on 8. Okay, so you've got um, either you play the E bass and then E minor, or you play E minor over D, which sounds nice because it's um, it's nice, it's just nice. And okay, you hear, you want to hear the joke? The joke? It's a really stupid joke. Why is six afraid of seven? Because seven eight nine. Okay, so. Um, and then this. This is a really cool lick. You're gonna love this. Okay? So 
told you you were gonna love this. This is a, one of my favorite licks in this composition. Okay, so two pull off to one, back to two uh, pull off hammer on on um, on the G string. Okay, reminds you of something. Okay, so this is a completely different context, and then. Open the B string, one on the B string, but you bar all three strings. You bar E, B, and G because now you need to slide it up to five. So, and then five on the E string, and you play um, B string and G strings along with the A bass. And then E again, B and G strings again, then the bass, and then E again, and then the B and G strings again. Uh, it sounds uh, uh, confusing when I say it, but it's really simple. It's this. It's just E and then B and G three times with the bass notes. Okay, so it's. Bass, bass. It's the same, uh, the same rhythmic idea as this. Okay. Composition. Okay. Got it. So from the top. strings and uh, the string and three on the B string and you play A string, G string and B strings and then you take this finger up a string, this finger down a string and now you have E minor, E minor, it's not at nine, this is nine, so, um, so this is E minor. Um, Two on the E bass, three on the high E, and you pick um, you pick strings E, B, G, and E. So got it. So it's uh, and then um, yeah. and then okay, and then. You play this. Okay? Scott Joplin was a genius. Um, you bar the ninth fret and you place two fingers. You place the third and uh, your th third finger and the pinky on uh, 11 and 11 on the B and G strings. It's actually it's actually an F sharp chord but you don't have to put the second finger on because you don't use it. So you don't play it. You don't play that note. So it's easier to put this than this. So it's faster. Um, and then you pick the, um, the A string along with the G string and then B string, E string, and then either slide or just play. Okay, I like to slide. 214 and then pull off from 12 to 9 and then 10 all on the E string and then 12 on the B string then A string and then this chord uh, an A diminished chord from the E string to the D string it's 8 7 Eight, seven, or from the top seven eight seven eight. Okay, so okay, or you can leave the A on, but um, the 
ragtime feel is a staccato feel, so this sounds more fitting to this piece. So, we're done with the first line. Let's play it again so we can dissect it and analyze it. Okay, it's G. It's G to G minor to G. That's smart. So, it's G. G, C. Either it's G over D or C over A, remember? C with the ninth. Uh, e minor. E minor, A minor. By the way, recognize this chord? It's A minor, it's just A minor. G over B, E minor. Then, F sharp. That's the first round of this, the third part. We're the third part already. That's nice. Um, but that's nice, but we still have a long way to go. Um, so then you play it again. play the G over B and then this or I like this chromatic movement because it's it's a chromatic it's a chromatic lick after a chromatic lick instead of or so it's backwards movement then forwards movement that's why I like it because it's it diversifies the, the, the lick a bit so, the G over B, and then 5, 4 on the E bass, then 0 on the E bass, and then you bar the, you bar, the, this is D sharp 7, it's gonna, it's, you play D sharp 7, but you bar the first fret for a D sharp bass. So um, you play the D sharp with pinky on three um, on the E string, second finger on two on the B string, third finger on three on the G string, and barring the first fret. So, okay, so, and then this. So, it's this. Um, you bar the 7th fret on strings E, B, and G, and you pick the E and G strings. Okay? Alone. It's just a major 6th. So, and the, e, the A bass along with it. Okay? And then the pinky on 10, on the E string. Again, you pick um, you pick five and five on E and G on the E string and the G string. It's a major six. You don't play an A minor chord. Okay. You want to give it that major feel, that major sound. Because if you play all three, it's a minor chord. If you play only these two, it's a major sixth. The ear hears it as a major chord. So. So it's seven, ten, five. Bass notes. A, A, A. Got it? A. With it, without it, without it. Okay? The chord is without the bass. It's chord with bass, bass, chord, bass. Okay? Don't know any other way to explain it. Um, and then it's this. Um, a very cliche um, movement. It's just... It's a scale. It's three on the B string. 
zero and two on the E string, and then three on the E string along with the G bass on five on the E string. Okay? So you play the entire G chord. You pick the E string and the E, B, and G strings. The E bass along with the E, B, and G strings. Okay? And then you play open E string, which is D, of course. So it's the fifth of the G chord. You play it by itself, and then you play the G chord again. Okay, five here, three here. So, and you're done with the third part. And then you play this. Remember this from the second part? It's G, G over G sharp, D, E, E7, A7, D. So, third part in full speed. second ending gets uh, replaced. Okay, and then this. Now, fourth and last part. The fourth and last part um, is designed to be playful uh, because the third part is really complex um, so the fourth part is kind of a comic relief it's uh, it's very amusing it's uh, it's supposed to be amusing so it goes like this it employs um, natural harmonics from the top easier than the third part but it's got its own little tricks you'll see so um, it's a minor third on three and five and um, the bass pedal is just a um, so it's three and five moving back and forth between three and five and two and four okay that's the first line three two three two three okay um, along with the bass notes. Bass, 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 bass. Got it? Bass, 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 bass. And then A one last time, and then this. Okay, it's artificial harmonics at 12, 12, and 12 on B, E, and B strings. Okay, for those of you who don't know artificial harmonics, it's just placing your finger directly above the steel fret. Not above the wood, you press the wood. Uh, you place it above the steel, okay, at the end of the fret. And you just touch the string lightly. You don't press it, you just touch it, okay? You don't press it down towards the fret, you just touch it, you cover it, you pick, and you let it go. Okay, so B, E, and B um, at 12, and then 10 on E, 
12 pull off to 10 uh, on E, 12 on the B string. Okay, so this is the first lick. And then the same thing with 5 and 7, back and forth with 4 and 6. And then the last A again. It's optional, you don't have to do it, you can just play. Okay, and then it's artificial harmonics at 7, 7th fret, on the B and G strings, and you play uh, 7, 7, 7 on G, B, and the G. And then the solo is here. Okay, it's 12, uh, 12 and then 14 pull off to 12 on the E string, and then 15 on the B string. Okay, so... So it sounds like this. Okay. And then it's this minor uh, minor third, this time on five and six on the B and G strings. Five on B, six on G, and it's back and forth with four and three. With four and five, excuse me. Okay? So it's... Okay? These are all three licks. So... And this time it's 12 again, only on the G, B, and G strings. And then it's exactly the same lick uh, as the first one, only up one string. Up physically, down musically, because it's going down in the notes uh, of the scale, of the pitch, of the frequency, of the wavelength. Okay, so. Okay, so uh, it's 10, 12, 12 to 10 on the B string. And then it's. It's uh, 12 on the G string. So... And then you play... You play a B diminished chord. This time it's... Um, the, the, the high note is on 10. So it's 10, 9, 10, 9. And then you take this back to... Um, to, um, to 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 do G sharp um, or A flat diminished. This is seven. Seven is the high note. So seven six seven six. This was ten nine ten nine, and this is seven six seven six. So so it's um, B diminished three times, then A flat diminished once. And then D. Okay, um, it's five on the E string and seven on the B, G, and D string. You can bar if you want, but you don't pick the A string. Okay, so it's and then this, which is within a D chord. It's just uh, a playful. Um, a playful, um, a playful take on the, a playful break over the D chord. It's just two and four on the G and D strings. Two on G, four on D. Okay, this is, of course, inside a D chord. Entire first line. No reason 
to to have uh, to to have no fun when you play it slowly. Even when you play it slowly, you can still embellish and play with it. Um, that's the whole fun of it. When when you practice, if you want to make practicing fun, just try to make music of the slower version. Try to play with it as well. Just bend strings, slide, do whatever you like. Just make your own arrangement, even if you play it slowly, until you get it up to speed. Um, okay, second time around. Second time around begins the same way. Three, three to two. And then five to four. Okay? And this is where the second ending comes in. You play this. Okay. Now this is going to be a big jump. Um, from 15 to 3, and you have to, get, um, you have to get two fingers ready on the same string again. Uh, like here. Okay, you have to do it here. Which is G again. G to G minor. It's the same. It's the same lick. Again, only an octave down. Okay, so... This is the next line. The second ending goes like this. Ah, completely screwed it up. Put your first and second fingers on the G string on three and four, okay? And your third finger, because you're gonna need the pinky, so use your third finger on five on the E bass, making this a G. Now, um, again, it's four, three, four. It's G to G minor to G um, with your pinky waiting to play five on the E string. And the bass notes are G, D, and G, meaning five on the E string, open D string, five on the E string again. So um, G, D, G again. So G. G, D, high D note, uh, high A note with the pinky on five on the E string, then G bass again. So bass, 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 and the lick is this. Okay, it's four, three, four on the G string, five on the E string. Now. It, um, now just practice this. Just practice this jump. Just putting these three fingers all together. Got it? And then this. Three on the E string and three on the B string. You can bar it. You should bar it. And then, you don't have to slide. I just really enjoy slides for some reason. Maybe I have dreams of becoming a slide country player and I never really went for it. So, I don't know. Maybe that's why I like slides. Okay, um, now the next one is with the A bass and you do uh, seven, six, seven. 7-6-7 seven, seven on the B string, and then 7 on the E string. And then, this is D to D minor to D, and then D6, and then a D triad. Um, 10 on the E string, 10 on the B string, 11 on the G string. 
Okay, this is just this is a D chord. So and then the G over B again. And then E minor seven, you keep the pinky on the B string. Three on the B string, you keep it there and you just take the, the first finger up uh, to the to the E string. And you play the G and B string both times. Okay? First with the B bass, then with the E bass. Okay? It's the G and B strings. And then this. Okay, I don't think I have to explain it because it's the same ending as the second part ending. It's this. But I will explain it anyway. Uh, it's the, the A6, the A7-6 again. Open E string, D. And you do the same as you did before. D, G, A, D5. We're not done yet. We're gonna recap. So, second part, second line of the fourth part. So it's uh, okay, and then you just go ahead, play the first part again, and then at the ending, you play instead of A and D, you play A and the D chord, and you're done. Before you go, practice this. Getting this under your fingers. Um, subscribe to my channel. Can't believe I'm done. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of lessons. Go to the website and download the tab for this. It's free, completely free. Uh, leave a comment if you like. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, there's a donation button on the website. These lessons are all free and your donations help make it happen. Um, those, these lessons will always be free and I thank you very, very much for any donation you choose to make. Um, you've been very generous with the donations so far. It's not enough to quit my day job and do this every day, but I trust that it will um, because, well, I know you guys by now and uh, you're a really nice bunch so um, I thank you in advance for any donation and uh, go download the tab go get this under your fingers it's an amazing composition it's a terrific arrangement I love this piece and uh, thank you for requesting it uh, now I know how to play it too so um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you the next time I'll see you the next lesson Go get this under your fingers. Keep picking.